I've been playing with cycloidal drives recently. A couple of videos ago I made this normal cycloidal drive and in my last video I experimented with eccentrically cycloid gearing. I really liked the EC gearing system. It provides many of the benefits of the traditional cycloidal drive such as back drivability and it's virtually backlash free. But it reduces the part count and does away with the annoying drive pins which on the normal cycloidal drive should really have bearings in as they can suffer from sliding friction. In the comments for that video, everybody seemed to want to know one thing. Can you save space by putting the pin in on the inside of the larger gear? If I've learned anything from doing YouTube videos, it's that my audience are way smarter than I am, so I just had to try it out. I've got some Python code here, which rolls a small circle around the outside of a larger circle, and then offsets the resultant curve. This generates a cycloidal disk, which is used for both the standard cycloidal drive and the eccentric gears. The number of times which the small circle rolls around the larger one is one less than the number of pins in the cycloidal drive. If you want to see more details on this, I've made a video explaining how it all works. It's linked up in the corner now. To make this an internal gear, let's make it so the small circle rolls around the inside of the larger one. Now something's not quite right here. The circle appears to be sliding, not rolling. Let's reverse the rotation of the smaller circle. That's better, but it's still not quite right. We can see at the edge of the nodes, the path crosses itself. For an external cycloid, we need one less node than the number of pins, and for an internal one, we need one more. There we are, perfect. Now let's make it so it only shows us one pin. The offset we were using before was towards the centre of the disc. We need to swap the direction so the offset grows our cycloid. And there we are, finally we have a perfect internal cycloid. Time to move to CAD. In that previous video, I wrote a Fusion 360 script to generate a cycloidal disk. We'll make our changes in that too, and then run it. This gives us a section of the disk which we can duplicate round to form a full disk. We can then add a circle round the outside to form the body. We'll add a couple of lines to define the height of the gears. And then use a sweep tool to extrude the gear out. We'll twist it round by 360 degrees divided by the number of nodes, so the top and bottom of the gear are identical. If you'd like more information on this, this is covered in my previous video on EC gears. We can then do the same for the pinion gear, but this time twisting it by 360 degrees, and this will give us two perfectly intermeshing bodies. I've quickly thrown a stepper motor frame and bearing onto these to check that it all works. Let's send them to the printer. Now we have the printed parts, the stepper just screws into place and everything else is just pushed home. I'll connect up the stepper to a driver and we can see if it works. It runs really smoothly, I'm really impressed. This is just a demo piece. In an actual application we'd want to hold the front of the pinion with another bearing so it doesn't try and climb out of the nodes, and we'd probably put another bearing on the front of the large gear to stop it moving around. So let's do that. I've taken the same sketches and made a deeper set of gears. Then I've added a housing, multiple bearings, and some sockets so that we can put some aluminium extrusion into it. Let's see if I can make the parts appear with a simple editing trick. Boom! I'll attach the stepper as before, and then I'll snap a bearing into place and push the large gear into it. The pinion pushes onto the stepper and another bearing braces the other side of the large gear. A small bearing is pushed with some force into the housing, and we'll put it together. A piece of 5mm rod goes through the bearing and supports the pinion, and finally we can screw the two sides of the housing together. Don't worry, I'll do up those screws and lube it with PTFE grease off camera. Hooked up to the stepper driver again, it moves quite well. It is back drivable, but I think this needs to bed in a bit as it's a bit sticky in places. 
and the backlash doesn't seem too bad. About on par with the traditional cycloid drive. Let's see how much torque it can develop. Here I'm using the driver to hold the stepper motor still and I'm applying force to one end of the gearbox. The other end is pressing down on a set of scales, stolen from the kitchen, much to my other half's disgust. The scales are 20 centimetres from the centre of the gearbox, and you can see we reach about 2.1 kilos of force before it gives up. I can actually feel the pinion moving and popping between nodes at this point. 2.1 kilos at 20 centimetres is 4.1 newton metres, the same result as I got from my last EC gearbox. This design has a lot going for it, but I'm not sure it saves space on the external EC gears. Because the large gear is internal, it requires much larger and hence more expensive bearings, which in turn increase the overall size of the gearbox. But this has been a really interesting experiment. I hope you've had as much fun following along with it as I had making it. If any of you have any more crazy ideas, please let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear them. Please subscribe to see more interesting experiments like this and give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. As always, the CAD and code for everything you've seen here are available on my GitHub page, linked in the description. See you later.